Sophia Malone and you're watching Herstory. Today I'm gonna be Sonia Sotomayor. Order in the court. Sonia Sotomayor was born on June 25th, 1954 in the Bronx, New York. Her parents had come from Puerto Rico 10 years earlier in hope for better life. When Sonia's father lost his job, Sonia's mother, Selena, worked extra hard to support the family. Selena was like, don't worry, husband, I got this covered. Oh, and kids, education is extremely important, so you're going to Catholic school. When Sonia was nine, her father died. She spent a lot of time reading Nancy Drew books and watched a popular show called Perry Mason. She became interested in law and crime solving and thought, maybe I can solve crimes one day too. By high school, Sonia's neighborhood in the Bronx was pretty dangerous, so they moved to a safer place in the Bronx where she started high school. Sonia studied hard and soon met a boy named Kevin Noonan and they quickly became a couple. On a friend's advice, Sonia applied to college at Harvard, Yale, and Princeton, three of the best colleges in the United States. She got into all three. Sonia decided to go to Princeton because it was only about a ha an hour and a half from her home in New York. Princeton gave Sonia a full scholarship. That meant it was free for her to go there. Otherwise, Sonia could have never afforded it. Princeton wanted all students from different backgrounds, and Sonia found a group of friends who were very diverse. They spent a lot of time hanging out together at the Minority Center for Students. Sonia worked very hard in school, but she still didn't feel like she fit in. She was one of the only Hispanic students at Princeton, and she also realized, hmm, there aren't any Hispanic professors here. She and her friends were like, let's write letters to the Princeton and U.S. government. Eventually, their efforts worked, and Princeton hired a Hispanic assistant dean of student affairs. Sonia and Kevin got married on August 14th, 1976 at the famous St. Patrick's Cathedral in New York City. Then they moved to New Haven, Connecticut, where Sonia started Yale Law School in the fall. Law school was very hard, and just like at Princeton, there were not many minority kids. Sonia had to prove herself all over again. In her first year at Yale, Sonia met Jose Cabrinas. He had once been a lawyer for the governor of Puerto Rico and is now a top lawyer for Yale. Jose quickly became Sonia's mentor, and she learned a lot from him. In October 1978, Sonia and some other students were invited to have dinner with some lawyers from a big law firm. It was like an interview, and all of the students were hoping to get job offers. But the dinner didn't go so well. One of the lawyers asked Sonia, So, did you get into Yale because you're Puerto Rican? Yes, actually. Yale wants students from different backgrounds, so they helped me get in. The man did not approve. He was very mean and said, Well, I don't think you're as good as the other students, so... <clears throat> Sonia went to fight for herself and the other minorities again. She filed a complaint with Yale and was like, Listen up, Yale people! You shouldn't allow law firms to do interviews on campus that don't treat Hispanics fairly. You get me? One night in the school library, Sonia saw a bunch of people gathering. She snuck in to get some food and ended up meeting a very important man named Robert Morgenthau. He was a district attorney, also called a prosecutor for New York. His job was to bring charges against criminals and try to get them put in jail. Morgenthau liked Sonia and was like, Hey, Sonia, want to come work at the DA's office? And Sonia was like, Totally! It didn't pay a lot compared to a big law firm, but it was more than she had ever made before, and she loved her job. Sonia learned how the courts worked and how to bring charges against criminals. Her first case was against a student that had been in a fight. She also felt nervous and unprepared, and she didn't even understand some of what the judges were saying. Sonia lost that first case, but she kept learning and moved up fast. She worked long hours and had a tough schedule. But the tough work affected her marriage, and she rarely saw Kevin. They grew apart and eventually divorced in 1983. In 1984, Sonia decided to try another job opportunity at a law firm called Pavia and Harcourt, where she worked for a glamorous client named Fendi, an Italian company that made fancy purses. In the 1980s, criminals began to sell fake Fendi bags all over the streets of New York City. The fake bags were much cheaper than the real ones, so the criminals were hurting Fendi by making them lose money. Sonia went into court and got the judge to agree that those fake bags guys need to be stopped. They gave Sonia the right to grab or seize fake bags. This was dangerous. Sometimes Sonia even had to chase the fake bad guys. In 1988, Sonia was promoted to partner at her law firm, which meant she was one of the bosses and had a big salary now. 
But Sonia had another job in mind. You ready for this? I want to be a judge. With the help of her mentors, Sonia decided to apply to be a U.S. District Court judge. This was a high-level court where judges, not juries, made decisions. Sonia had to have her state senator recommend her, and she had to go before Congress and answer their questions. The whole application process took about two years. But finally, in 1992, Sonia was approved and named a federal judge. Sonia loved her job, but in 1997, President Bill Clinton said, I want to appoint her to an even higher court. She had to go through the entire approval process again. But in 1998, Sonia was approved. She would now sit on the Second Circuit Court, right alongside her mentor, Jose Cabrinez. Over the next 10 years, Sonia served as a judge, taught classes at many law schools, and gave speeches all over the country. In 2009, Sonia got a call from the White House telling her that one of the Supreme Court judges is going to retire and that President Obama is seriously considering you for the position. Bye. The Supreme Court is the highest court in the country, and it decides the most important cases in the USA. The process to get on the Supreme Court was even harder. FBI agents interviewed her to make sure she hadn't done anything bad in her past. She also went to the White House to meet President Obama and Vice President Biden. On May 26, 2009, Sonia and her family stood at the White House while President Obama announced Sonia as the next Supreme Court Justice. She would be the third woman to ever sit on the Supreme Court and would be the first Hispanic. On August 8, 2009, Sonia was sworn to sit in the, on the Supreme Court. Then Sonia was like, time to celebrate! President Obama had a party for her at the White House, and Sonia went out dancing the salsa with her family. Even though Sonia would now be a famous Supreme Court judge, she didn't want to change who she was. She wanted to stay connected to her roots, just like she always had. The rest you ask? The rest? That's history. Case closed. Thanks for watching.